You're watching F5. We are here at InfoSecurity Europe 2024. We're at the F5 stand at stand E140. Come on by. You might win a free pair of Nike Air Force Ones that are branded red. Look beautiful. A few of our folks are wearing them today, so make sure you come by if you're seeing this video uh, while the show is still on. Uh, otherwise, I, uh, today I am joined by Bart Salatz. Bart, can I get you to introduce yourself? Yeah, hi, I'm Bart. I'm uh, based here in the EMEA region. I'm heading up Solution Architects uh, in the EMEA region. I'm also a field CTO for the region. Okay, dual role. Awesome. Uh, Bart, I always learn a lot when I talk to you, and one of the things that I just learned is there is an acronym called DORA. So I thought, hey, what better can, uh, video can we do but actually defining what this is because I don't know what it is, so there might be other people that are not from the region that know what it is and they might end up dealing with it one day. So that's my, that's my thought here. So maybe we could talk about that a little bit here. Let me know what DORA is and why it's important. Okay, so DORA stands for Digital Operational Resiliency Act. It's an EU legislation which is going to be imposed on financial institutions in the European Union, but not only is it restricted to the European Union, also financial institutions that do business with EU companies will have to comply uh, to this uh, new regulation. And the goal of the regulation is actually to make, to uh, let's say, increase the IT security of the financial sector as a whole, and to harmonize uh, the tools and the principles that uh, the financial institutions use to, to get to a better, resilient model withstanding, let's say, huge uh, cyber attacks. And of course, the geopolitical situation in this continent here is, is actually driving some of that, making our financial industry as robust as possible in, to withstand cybersecurity attacks, basically. Okay, cool. So, uh, that is interesting. So, people that are dealing with uh, folks in uh, EMEA region are going to have to deal with this. So it's going to come or be become a thing in North America anyways for a lot of companies, whether they like it or not. Yeah, it's true. It's true. So, the, so they're going to look into who is digitally interacting with financial institutions. So we're here in UK and UK is a very good example because most of the big financial institutions in UK do a lot of business with EU-based banks. So uh, they will have to start complying with this regulation as well. Okay, cool. Okay, so for from an F5 perspective, what is, uh, do we have solutions around that or how are our uh, field teams helping our customers address this? Yeah, so DORA is a very broad framework, right? It includes things like organizations need to adopt a cyber risk management uh, uh, infrastructure. They need to comply with reporting obligations. So if they're under attack, there are certain reporting obligations to the local authorities. They have to start doing penetration testing, resiliency testing of their infrastructure. So there's, it's a broad scheme of things that they will have to do. Obviously, F5 is only active in the business of, let's say, securing applications and APIs. But, but definitely, APIs, uh, applications and APIs specifically have become a major threat vector for hackers getting into organizations. And APIs are the lifeblood of financial institutions with the open banking API uh, APIs that we have out there. So what we can help our customers with is really protect that piece of the infrastructure, be part of that cyber risk management framework and delivering solutions that can help them protect their applications and their APIs, regardless of whether they are deployed in their private data centers, in their public cloud environments, in their edge compute environments. We provide them with the capability to do it in all these places simultaneously while still having centralized operations and control. And that is very important because as I stated earlier, there are reporting obligations when you're under attack. So having that centralized visibility of your entire application and API portfolio in one single place is going to be very important to, to let's say, uh, obey with the uh, reporting obligations that DORA sets forward. Yeah, I would imagine some of those reporting obligations might be like time-based, like something's happened, so you must uh, gather all the information, which if you have information in lots of different places, gathering all that information is going to be difficult. Correct, correct. There are specific timelines. I don't know the timelines by heart, but they have several measures like there is so much time that you have from the moment that you're under attack that you report it to the authorities. Then you have some time to investigate what was the cause of the breach and you have to report that as well. And last but not least, there are very severe penalties if you do not comply with all the requirements. Uh, that goes from financial penalties, but it's also about personal liability of 
let's say the C-suite, uh, etc. So there is, there's definitely a lot of good reasons why people need to take this very, very seriously. Yeah. All right. So what I gather from that is uh, organizations are going to need security. Uh, they're going to need visibility centralized and they're going to need streamlined operations uh, because they need to be able to flow through if something bad were to happen or if they need to go through protections, they need to be able to prove that they've enabled their protection. So it kind of sounds like a pretty good fit for F5 if I do say so myself. Absolutely, absolutely <laughs> true. It's like they've done the sales pitch for us through Dora. Uh, fantastic. Okay, I can't let you go away without talking about AI. So, um, Bart, I don't know, for AI, what, uh, where do you see the market moving right now in terms of are people actually deploying it or are people talking about it and just uh, dreaming up scenarios but don't really have a real use case yet? I mean, what, are, what are you seeing out there? No, I, th I think we're starting to see some real deployments now. I mean, not every organization operates at the same pace, but sometimes it comes from unexpected corners. We've seen some, uh, let's say, AI projects in, in uh, let's say, the public sector, which is not known for being the, the fastest. Mm -hmm. So we definitely see uh, some of these things happening uh, as we speak, yeah. I find it interesting too in that, uh, and I'm discovering myself, a lot of uh, organizations already had data teams who were doing machine learning type stuff, and then all of a sudden they're like, oh, AI, or not them, AI is like this big thing, and the or whole organization's like, Oh my goodness, we have to do something about AI. And the data team's like, uh, over here, we were doing all the, we have all of the data here, and we're doing all this machine learning here, and now we're just building chatbots. I don't know. <laughs> Are you seeing that as well? Yeah, true. I think one example I have in mind is, is uh, uh, I'm not going to name the country, but there's, uh, there's organizations in multiple countries that help unemployed people with finding the right jobs. Mm. Obviously, they have large databases of information about people, about their uh, resumes, etc. So they're now uh, putting all this data into a large language model, and, and, and that helps them tremendously mapping the candidate to the right jobs. And, and the first results have been very promising there. It's, they see that it's, it becomes easier to do the mapping between the unemployed people with uh, the open jobs that are out there in, in the country. Uh, so these are good examples of where, where it really adds a lot of value. Absolutely. Well, I think about, uh, you know, there's been some changes in the industry over the past couple of years and um, resume optimization has been a thing and, and the idea that, hey, recruiters have to review a cover letter and they scan it for something, but it's still a human that's scanning that and they might, I don't know, it's the end of their day, they're really tired and they, there's a really good resume there, but they kind of look past it because they weren't able to scan it with all of their attention. So applying natural language to it and having uh, some of that offloaded by AI is probably giving everybody a fair chance now at some of those or, uh, jobs that are out there. So yeah, I see a real benefit to that. It's pretty cool, fantastic. All right, Bert, always learn a lot when I talk to you, so thank you for uh, chatting with me. Pleasure. Uh, thank you for watching this video. You'll find more if you follow us on LinkedIn, on X and Twitter, and on YouTube, and otherwise, thank you very much for watching, and we will see you on the next one. Bye now.